Arguments are extraordinary things, painful things sometimes, but fantastic ways of clarifying thought. That could be arguing with your partner, arguing with a friend, arguing in a law court, arguing in parliament. But for me at least, all these types of arguments show where the truth is going wrong, helps you to think more clearly, and in my case, helps me to change my mind. A successful argument basically starts with a really good grasp of the subject. You need to choose your subject well. Secondly, structure. It needs a very clear beginning, middle and end. Thirdly, the content of it, the words, the phrases, the metaphors, the jokes, the things that give it life. And finally, emotion and the way in which that's carried out, not just in the words, but in your voice and in the way that you move your body. When I'm making a speech or I'm about to go into a, a formal public argument, I firstly work out very clearly what the structure is. What are the two points or five points that I'm trying to land? Then I think very carefully about memorizing the first line and the last line so that I can finish on a strong point. And then I walk and practice, speak and practice, speak and practice. And sometimes it just flows. Sometimes it's magical. And sometimes you find that something you thought was going to be magical has become all kind of tortured and contorted and too complicated and it's not really working. Arguments go, go wrong in many, many different ways. One of the main ways in which we go wrong is that we just lose control of our words and we lose control of our emotions. Emotion is very, very dangerous in argument. It can really put people's back up and really upset them. And we, we feel at a sort of animal level somebody's emotion coming at us and it can make us sort of shut down and no longer listen to the words. But at the same time, emotion done properly is really the only way to win an argument because nobody's just gonna listen to words. So the master in argument is somebody who can perfectly calibrate when to hold back and when to go for it. The best argument I've probably ever won was in the first leadership debate when I was running against the other candidates to be leader of the Conservative Party to be Prime Minister of Britain. And I suddenly found about halfway through the debate that I had the right type of comparison to use. And then I suddenly remembered that I'd been trying to put three bin bags into the rubbish bin at home. And my wife said, you're never going to get these three huge bags of rubbish in. And I was tempted, like Michael, uh, and, and like Dom to say, believe in the bin, believe in Britain, right? It's, it's nonsense. They are not going to get a different deal out of Europe. We all know that. They, they know it themselves. I produced it and I won the audience round and I won the debate. The worst argument I had in my life was the second big TV debate I did when I was running to be leader of the Conservative Party. And this was my big chance to prove that I could be Prime Minister. And I thought I had the most killer argument. And I was just going to say to Boris Johnson, how are you going to get Brexit done by the 31st of October? And I kept asking the question and nobody would answer. And I got more and more wound up with myself and my whole body language kind of cramped up. My voice became very contorted. I took off my tie very bizarrely in the middle of this debate. And I felt, yeah, within about two paragraphs, I'd managed to lose uh, my entire vision for Britain. Tonight, you were a bit lacklustre, weren't you? And you're right. I didn't find that format really worked for me. And I'm going to have to learn how I... I flourish in a strange format of alternative reality. One of the great changes in the history of argument is, of course, the arrival of television, because suddenly it's possible for people to view politicians in particular in action. And the great moment where this really came into prominence was the TV debate between Kennedy and Nixon about who was going to be president. And famously, Nixon won on radio in fact, his arguments were much more serious, much more thoughtful, but Kennedy just glowed on television, and that's what really won him the presidency. Mm -hmm. 
I love arguing on Twitter. There's something very, very satisfying about the discipline of that word limit. You get to put out your argument and then somebody comes back and then you come back at them. And I love the clarity of that. It's a beautiful way of arguing which wasn't available to us until Twitter was around. One of the things that's very difficult about argument is that in the modern world we often see it as a very, very bad thing. Arguing, sometimes it's seen as a very male thing, a very aggressive thing, something that makes people unhappy. It's almost a form of bullying. But if you don't argue, it is very, very difficult to get to the truth. If you just let everything slide, if nothing gets challenged, if you don't try to really pin down what somebody's saying, you get a very lazy form of thought. And the lazy form of thought, in the end, is a version of lying. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, be sure to check out these videos next. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get a notification each time we upload a new video.